What is up everybody and welcome back to the channel. I am your host Drew Hoover and we are doing another segment of Prospect Rankings. And today we're talking about this year's class of wide receivers and it seems like every year there's so much depth at this position. And to quote a few you know, uh, experts, you have Daniel Jeremiah that says that picking a wide receiver is like picking your favorite flavor of ice cream. There's no wrong answer, it's just depending on what kind of wide receiver you're looking for. And Bucky Brooks says there's three types of wide receivers. There are the big play wide receivers, the red zone threats, and then what you call the chain game wide receivers or possessional wide receivers. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please click that subscribe button. And if you have any graphic design needs, Anthony Garcia is your man. And remember, he's got this new website, him and another graphic designer. And if you have any graphic design needs or video production, please go to OpticVenture.com. So let's get started. And at number one, I told you if you watched my quarterback prospect rankings that this might be controversial because some people already have their mind of who the number one wide receiver is. And it's mostly either Garrett Wilson or Drake London. But on my board, the number one wide receiver I have is Chris Olave, wide receiver from Ohio State. Now, I'm going to dive a little deeper into why Olave over Garrett Wilson, but let's dive into him a little bit. Chris Olave is 6'1", 189 pounds. He had 65 receptions for 936 yards and 13 TDs. He is two-time first team all Big Ten he, he's an excellent route runner uh, he his speed and acceleration make him an obvious deep threat uh, some people don't like his lean frame but he can make all the plays that you want as a wide receiver uh, my comparison for him in the NFL is Stefan Diggs just to, like to the fact that they're not they don't have the ideal size and frame that you want as a wide receiver but they can run the rounds and make incredible catches. And so, why Chris Olave over Garrett Wilson? Well, I have been watching these two uh, pretty much since the end of the college football regular season. And I already knew that some people had Garrett Wilson as their number one wide receiver. In fact, you might argue that most people have Garrett Wilson as their number one wide receiver. But as I compare the two films, in fact, I've watched Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson more than any other prospects in the entire draft because I try to get this right. But every time I kept getting this gut feeling, and I'm and hence why I have it this way, that not only is Garrett Wilson not the best wide receiver in this draft, he may not even be the best wide receiver to come out of Ohio State in this draft class. I mean, both are good route runners. I would say Chris Olave is better. Uh, Chris Olave is obviously better. Some project him to run under 4-4 at the scouting combine. And both are you know, great catchers just in different ways. And if you don't believe me, just ask the Big Ten Conference. Remember I said he was two-time uh, first-team Big Ten. When he first did that was back in 2020. Both him and Garrett Wilson were first-team all Big Ten that year. But in 2021, they had to make room for David Bell in first team. And guess who got booted to second team? Garrett Wilson. And in fact, Chris Olav had more votes than David Bell and Garrett Wilson. So I think that shows the kind of player that Chris Olav is. And just a little side note before I get to my next pick. we I went through the same dilemma when we evaluated Paris Campbell and Terry McLaurin. A lot of experts liked Paris Campbell over Terry McLaurin, but when I watched the film back in the day, I thought he was the better wide receiver of the two. Turns out Paris Campbell can't stay healthy in the NFL, and Terry McLaurin has already established himself as a great wide receiver. In fact, most people say he's the most underrated wide receiver in the NFL. That's why even though I want to go with the experts that like I said, a lot of them love Garrett Wilson, and even if he's not number one, he's probably number two on their list. I'm going with my gut here and say that Chris Olave is the better Buckeye and the best wide receiver in this draft class. And now for my second wide receiver on my board. 
Jamison Williams, wide receiver from Alabama. At 6'2", 189 pounds, he had 79 receptions, 1,572 yards, and 15 TDs. Those receiving yards were third most in Alabama history behind wide receivers like Amari Cooper and Devontae Smith. He was first team all SEC and it was also second team SEC when it comes to special teams as a returner. He's got that explosive release, the combination of speed and acceleration. This guy is an absolute home run hitter. He makes plays similar to Jamar Chase. I always think back to week 17 when the Cincinnati uh, Bengals faced uh, against the Kansas City Chiefs. That first touchdown of the game, Jamar Chase is surrounded by a half dozen defenders, outruns every single one of them. And that is exactly the play you're going to get from Jamison Williams. My NFL comparison to him is Deshaun Jackson. He's that obvious deep threat that can take the top off the defense. And people have said both about these players about their inconsistency with their hands. Uh, but man, I think, you know, people say they value route running. I think route running is very important to me. But it seems like a lot, in the at least in the last few drafts, people have valued speed. When you talk about Henry Ruggs, you look at uh, Jamar Chase, man, he ran under 4-4 at the scouting combine last year. I believe he ran at 4-3-5, and he was the top wide receiver picked. If uh, Jamison Williams ends up being the fastest guy at the scouting combine, don't be surprised if he's the number one wide receiver off the board on draft day. And now for the third wide receiver on my board, and that is Drake London, wide receiver from USC. At 6'5", 210 pounds, I know he his year was cut short with injury, but he still had 88 receptions for 1,084 yards and 7 TDs. He has been Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Year. He's been all Pac-12 first team. Uh, he's got that big frame and toughness. He can catch those 50-50 balls. Everyone talks about his catch radius. Uh, like I said, when you talk about flavor ice cream, uh, he was what you call a red zone threat. And when, like I said, no matter where you throw it to this guy, most likely he's going to catch it. And that's why my NFL comparison for him is Michael Crabtree. In fact, a lot of people say Mike Evans, but Michael Crabtree, I think when you talk about his size, when you talk about their ability to also play behind the line of scrimmage and, uh, you know, fight for those extra yards. Uh, man, Michael Crabtree was a big wide receiver prospect that came out of Texas Tech, played for several years with the 49ers and the, and the Oakland Raiders. I think Drake London has that, you know, potential. I know a lot of people might be scared about, again, that ankle injury, but I think a lot of people are willing to take the chance because of the production they saw from him out of USC. And now for my fourth wide receiver on my board. Traylon Burks, wide receiver from Arkansas. Now, I know Garrett Wilson is not on this board yet, but remember, my rankings of these players aren't a representation of how I feel they're going to go in the NFL draft. For all we know, Garrett Wilson could be the number one wide receiver picked in this draft. This is just my personal rankings of these wide receivers. So let's get into Traylon Burks. At 6'3", 225 pounds, he had 66 receptions for 1,104 yards and 11 TDs. He was second team All-SEC in 2020. They made first team in 2021. Everyone talks about his run after the catch, and Arkansas really used him in so many different ways. He's so versatile. Uh, he was used uh, as a deep threat uh, down the sidelines. He could also be used in reverses and in trick plays. I think he even tried to attempt to pass against the Auburn Tigers in 2021. And when you talk about all these things, who does this remind you of? My NFL comparison is Debo Samuel, the wide receiver for San Francisco 49ers. And we all talked about how this guy stepped it up as a running back this year. He was still their top wide receiver and was still able to run the ball this year. And he even threw a touchdown pass in the wild card game against the Dallas Cowboys. So when you talk about all these, you know, teams with offensive-minded head coach and all these great, uh, you know, 
offensive minds with coming up with all these different plays. When you talk about a guy like Trey Burks with that much versatility, and you know he's he's you know, pretty much your Swiss Army knife. I am hoping he goes to the right system. You don't. I don't want a Tavon Austin situation because he's one of the best wide receivers to come out of college football history. But then he went to St. Louis, and the Rams never utilized him the proper way. And what a waste of an NFL career. I am hoping Traylon Burks ends up with the right team because he's got a lot of talent to be used in so many different ways. And now for my number five wide receiver. I know you're shocked to find him this low. Garrett Wilson, wide receiver from Ohio State at six foot, 188 pounds. He had 70 receptions for 1,058 yards and 12 touchdowns. He was first team all big 10 in 2020 then second team in 2021. I don't think he has elite speed. That's maybe why he dropped down this far, but you can't argue the fact that he gets easy separation in his routes. Again, I told you, Chris Olaf and Garrett Wilson are two excellent route runners. And I told you they catch, you know, the ball in different ways. Chris Olaf to me is more of a tight rope kind of catcher. He can make those incredible sideline catches. To me, Garrett Wilson is more of an acrobat. And there's nothing to be ashamed of that. In fact, I love that kind of wide receiver. When you look at his freshman year against Clemson, you look at what happened in 2021. I always go back to that Michigan touchdown uh, towards the end of the year. Uh, my NFL comparison to him is Allen Robinson, who came out of Penn State, played with Jacksonville and Chicago. Uh, man, he's a route runner, but if he is covered, I mean... He's a guy that you can trust to throw it in this direction. He's going to find a way to get possession of it and take it down. Uh, Garrett Wilson is a great wide receiver. I don't want anyone to be confused by this. Just because he's at number five doesn't mean I think he's not a good wide receiver. It's just a matter of your flavor of ice cream. In fact, if you look at my list, how they're positioned, you see where I value. You know, the top two wide receivers uh, are probably the big play guys. You know, Chris Olave, Jamison Williams. Then you had the second two which I would say it would be a red zone threats. Drake London and Traylon Burks. And now you have Garrett Wilson right here, who is pretty much a possession guy. Route running is very important. I'm glad he's very, I mean, that to me, you have to have separation. You got to run your routes. That's very important to me, which is why I still believe there's a he could be the number one wide receiver in this draft. Uh, I just don't want there to be any confusion right there, guys. But anyway, that has been my top five wide receivers for the 2022 NFL Draft. We'll see what happens in scouting combine and the pro days. We'll see how these projections are shaped and stuff. I will come out with a mod draft. I know some people already have made half a dozen by now. Daniel Jeremiah just came out with his second mod draft. I'm trying to lay the foundation so that you know how I view the players. And then that way, the mock draft, when it does come out, can run a lot smoother. This has been your Average Joe Sports Network. I'm your host, Drew Hoover, and have a good day, everybody.